I'm going to talk about the prep rollout of prep in Europe. Of course, I'm not going to review country by country because it would be impossible in 20 minutes. But what I'm going to do is to, well, these are my disclosures which haven't changed from this morning. And to start, uh, I, I'm going to, to show you this slide, which was the last one uh, I show in the same meeting, I was invited two years ago, the same meeting to talk about PrEP, and it was my last slide. Uh, today, I could start my talk with the same slide, because uh, still uh, waiting for PrEP being available, or being widely available. So I'm going to review how is the situation uh, globally, and but before that, just a brief review of the epidemiological background. And this morning, Dr. Sandalesco, she gave us a very good uh, presentation, nice presentation, showing that the, whereas globally the HIV epidemics is going down, in the European region is going up, and mainly at the, the east, eastern European countries, as you can see on the on the blue blue line, and we know that in two, 2016, more than 160,000 people were diagnosed of HIV, and most of them, 80%, were in the Eastern uh, European countries, as you can see. We know that the main uh, route of transmission is the is th th those in men who have sex with men. And globally, because uh, as we saw this morning in the Eastern countries, the pattern is different, but globally it's still men who have sex with men where the epidemic is concentrated. So we know that the, this, this group of population is uh, at risk, it's very high risk for not, not only for HIV, but only for other STIs. Uh, and if we look at the guidelines, the first guideline published was the, from the CDC because they, the states, it's the first country where PrEP was available, as you know. After that, then we have had uh, the WHO guidelines and the European guidelines, and they are very clear. And also, sorry, also we have national guidelines in many countries, Spain, for instance, where I'm from, we have uh, uh, national guidelines, which was published last year. I was participating on that. And the, looking at the WHO guidelines, it's very clear that they say that oral PrEP should be offered as an additional prevention choice for people who are at substantial risk. And in this case, defines substantial risk as uh, an HIV incidence greater than 100 person years. The European guidelines also say that we have to recommend PrEP. Uh, to HIV negative and uh, HIV MSM and transgender women who are inconsistent on their condom use, but also for HIV negative heterosexual woman, women and, and men. Also, we we've been uh, we have uh, the uh, already uh, approved the the Truvada, the the, the first uh, drug. Uh, Used for PrEP or oral PrEP. It's from July to 2016, the uh, European Medicine Agency approved and recommend the use of PrEP, of the, the, this oral PrEP. No? So, uh, and so we have a strong evidence of the efficacy and effectiveness of PrEP. We know that there, there is a group of population at very high risk where the HIV epidemic is concentrated. We have a clear recommendations from the experts and from the, uh, the uh, health authorities. We have the the Truvada already approved for the prep. But what's the situation? Well, if we this is uh, information from the ECDC is not. Uh, I mean, it's the from October 2017, but they haven't. It hasn't changed a lot. So in the dark green, you can see the countries where. PrEP is available within the national health system. Uh, you see uh, just a few. So now we have, in Europe, we have three possible scenarios for PrEP. The best one, the ideal one, is uh, uh, are those countries where PrEP is available through the national health system. And 
uh, if we if we were in a in a contest like Eurovision, uh, we <laughs> we would say without any kind of doubt that the winner is France. Yes, uh, congratulations France, <laughs> and congratulations to Jean Michel Molina, who is the principal investigator of the Hypergay study, and they they it was what they they get they made possible was the uh, approval of PrEP within the national, the French national health system in November 2015, so more than two years ago. And the Minister of Health announced that at, by the beginning of 2016, PrEP would be available in, in France. And it was like that, because they, PrEP is available there. Th that was possible because of a uh, partnership between research researchers and the community, and of course, because uh, a political commitment. Mm -hmm. And it made possible that right now, in France, you can get PrEP at hospitals, STI clinics, and also GP can renew the prescription for PrEP, and drugs are delivered at uh, hospital or private pharmacies. And I, two days ago, I asked Jean-Michel Molina uh, how many people are that are on PrEP right now in France, and it's around 10,000 people on PrEP right now in France, which is, well, uh, maybe I would, would expect more people on PrEP, but not bad. Uh, other countries where you can get PrEP through the national health system is Belgium. Uh, has to be said that uh, before that, Belgium implemented a uh, uh, demonstration study, that it's called Be Prepared, but now it's, it's fully available within the national health system. Uh, although you have to pay a small, a small fee, like in France, it's around, well, it depends, no, but maybe 10 euros, something like that, so it's not a, it's not a big amount. Also Norway, Norway uh, has a PrEP available, Scotland, and Portugal, they announced that it was going to be available within the national health system, but the reality, according, as far as I know, and according to the information I, I collected, that is, right now it's limited to, to a, well, it's a, a limited amount of people who can get access to through the national health system. The second scenario where it's, in, it's through the demonstration or implementation studies. So the answer is, okay, I want PrEP, I need PrEP, I think I need PrEP, but in my country it's not available through the national health system. What can I do? Well, you have this option in those countries where there are a, there are, they are implementing some of these studies. For instance, in Netherlands, in, in Amsterdam, they have the UNPREP study with 370 mainly MSM and transgender women. It's going to finish by the end of this year, and they, com they uh, can use the daily PrEP or the intermittent PrEP and uh, the, also, the, well, so far, they have seen uh, only one zero conversion in, in, a, in a man who in MSM would, would, ha, would adherence. So it, it was not a multi-resistant virus, so they know exactly why that happened, but it happened only once, only one, one case of zero conversion. And, but the, the through it's already available in, in France, uh, in, in, in uh, Netherlands, in Amsterdam, at the pharmacies that you can find the generic. I think that for, for you can buy it for 50 euros. Uh, David uh, this morning was explaining also this. Uh, more demonstration studies. Oh, if you are in, in England, also you can have access to the, imp, the PrEP impact trial. This is uh, quite a big uh, study. Thousand, sorry, 10,000 people. The cost is, be, is going to be 10 million pounds, which is not bad, and the duration will be three years, and it has started uh, recently. If you are in Wales, and if you live in, in Wales, also you can get access through this, the, this prepared study. It's called, it's a project for three years. In Spain, in Spain, I know it's better the situation in Spain because uh, we have two demonstration studies and we are participating on this. The first one is sponsored by the Spanish Ministry of Health. It's for 12 years. Uh, the planned study population was 400 people, but probably they are not going to reach that, that uh, population. 
And I have to say that uh, I'm not very happy with this study because uh, when it's finished, I mean in 12 months, there is no any commitment from the, the Spanish Minister of Health for uh, continuing the, for uh, being, for making PrEP accessible to the population. So what's going to happen after 12 months, we say to the participants, okay, well, you are now again without PrEP or you have to, to buy PrEP or whatever. No? The another study implemented in, this is in, in Catalonia, it's, uh, it's called PrEP ARA. This is sponsored by the regional go the government, the Health Department of Catalonia. The N is uh, 70, we, we have 70 MSM and transgender women, but the high risk, the, criteria, the, the inclusion criteria was quite strict. And it's, for, it's going to last for 24 months, two years. And if you don't have any demonstration or study in your country, or you don't have access to any of these studies because the recruitment is already, uh, it's already closed, then uh, you could have access, but the, the recruitment is also already, is already, already uh, closed also, the, a clinical trial. In Europe right now, there is the DISCOVER study. This is a phase three study. It's a non-inferiority study comparing the, the Truada versus the DISCOVI, I mean, which means Tenofovi versus STAF. And it's quite, quite a big study, clinical trial. It's the, the study population is more than 5,000 people, MSM and transgender people, and transgender women for three years, the duration is three years, and it's uh, in, implemented in the United States and the European countries, you can see here, the European country, countries where you can also, who, which are participating in this study. It's sponsored by, by Gilead. And if you don't have access to, uh, through the national health system, not demonstration study, not a clinical trial, and you still want to do to be on prep? What can you do? Well, you can do what's called the informal prep. That means buying the the, the truada, usually the generic truada, and using the truada with follow up or not. Sometimes the people who buy truada don't have any kind of follow up or medical follow up with all the problems or the the possible problems related to this kind of use. No, so. There are, uh, for instance, the Dean Street the, the, in London, the clinic, the STI clinic in London, who, which has created recently what's called the prep shop. I like the idea because they sell the, the, the Trois generic for 55 pounds, and also they can do the follow up of the every three months, the, screen, the STI screening, and the, of course the HIV test, and, the, and monitoring the, the renal function, etc. So it's uh, uh, another way of getting prep. There is a website uh, it's called I Want Prep Now, where they uh, you can be informed about also options uh, to buy prep. Uh, this one, the Dynamics International, as you can see, it's a Thai company which sells the generic Truada for 19 euros per per 30 pills, so it's really, it's a, a low cost, a low cost company, no? Also they recommend you to, to buy this through this company. If you are in Germany, you can buy Truvada, it's a it's nice initiative, uh, it's called 50 euro pre program, so you can buy generic Truvada, the pharmacies, and also they inform you about the doctors and clinics where you can get the, the follow up. If you are in Italy, uh, you can buy the generic Truvada for, I've been told that for 70 euros this morning, uh, Andrea De Luca told us that it was cheaper, but also they have uh, this website where you can be informed about uh, the follow-up and where you can get this. Coming, going to Barcelona, this is a community center where I also work. It's called Besena Checkpoint. And now we have created the prep Besena prep point. It was in November the last year, and it's the first community center providing prep in Spain. We have more than 600 MSM and transgender women on prep through studies or through or people who are doing the informal prep. 
they buy the trial and do, we do the follow-up. And uh, I, I've been explaining to you that the, the possible scenarios, but what do we know about the situation? Uh, because we know the number of participants of the studies, but we don't know about the number of informal, the informal use. This is a study, a survey implemented by the ECDC. It's a survey which includes 17 questions. It was implemented in 55 European and Asian, Central Asian countries last year. I can tell you some results, but I cannot, <laughs> I cannot uh, because they are not yet published, but I can just tell you that 10% uh, of the respondents said that they were on PrEP, 10%. Of the of this of this population, and 47 percent were doing informal prep, so with any usually with any kind of control of medical uh, control, uh, which means that prep is is here, but it's on the street. If you look at one of the most famous apps for gay men, it's the Grinder. Then, and the profile, sorry, it's in Spanish, but I, I, I explained that uh, at the end of the profile, you can specify where you are HIV, your HIV status, we are HIV positive, negative, and you also have the option of saying that you are on PrEP. And for instance, this, this guy say that he's HIV negative and he's on PrEP. Uh, I must say that if we could, uh, sometimes it's, you know, they are not on PrEP, they are HIV positive who are on treatment. So from the transmission point of view is the same. They are not going to transmit the HIV, but because of the stigma, sometimes they prefer to, to put on the, the profile that they are uh, on PrEP rather than they are HIV positive. Mm -hmm. And if you want to be updated, there are different uh, websites. I recommend this, for instance. And also the ECDC information, they have, it, they have some reports about PrEP in Europe. And just uh, to, to finish, what, are the, what I think are the challenges for PrEP in, in Europe? Well, the first one is PrEP to be approved and available within the national health system. I think, I think that this is the only way. And the other, the other, the other formulas are just for, uh, we say that temporary formulas, but the, uh, the last goal should be this. And as we can see, uh, we have seen in France, we, we have learned from France, experience that a close partnership with the community and with a strong political support that makes possible the, also the, the implementation of, of PrEP in a, in a country. Although, as we have seen, a lot of people are already on PrEP, still uh, think that we have to increase the PrEP awareness among health professionals, not only among potential users, but uh, and especially the, the, the among people at higher risk. Yes, uh, that's MSM, transgender and ma migrant heterosexuals. We have to define appropriate models of care and access points. We have to decide whether the best is uh, to the, the best place to provide PrEP is a hospital, or it's a sexual health clinic, or it's a primary care center, community center. As you, I show you this morning, uh, when we ask to, to the to people, in this case to MSM, they say that they prefer to receive and to be follow up in a primary care center or in a community center. Mm -hmm. So that's clear for them. But also uh, the, this, the PrEP could be, of course, delivered at a uh, hospital level. And in this case, we, we have to know how to integrate the, this uh, PrEP services in the, into the existing services, because what we find sometimes is that uh, an HIV unit, it's uh, with a lot of patients, and we can find that uh, doctors or health professionals are not fully <laughs> willing to, to also to cope with this kind of, of services, no? We have to look at that. Of course, we have to monitor and, and evaluate the PrEP implementation. 
uh, we've talked a lot about about this this morning, no? The challenge, another challenge is the development of new formulas, the long-acting drugs, implants, neutralizing antibodies, and of course to reduce the cost of drugs, which has already started because we already have the generics, but not available everywhere. And also David explained us very nicely how uh, the prep can be cost saving. Because uh, this is a report from the ECDC, and uh, you can see the cost of prep and the cost of services were uh, the main were seen, but the, 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 the European countries were seen as the main barriers for implementing, uh, for fully implementing the, the prep in, in, in the country. Uh, uh, I want to acknowledge to Taymor Nori from the ECDC. He has uh, allowed me to use some of the ECDC slides, and also to Jean Michel Molina and Giulio Corbelli and Ricardo Fuentes from Portugal and Giulio from Italy, who have gave me, given me uh, updated information about the situation. Of course, uh, I haven't uh, done a review of. Uh, the, the, all the European countries, because in 25 minutes it's, it's we we'll say it's impossible, uh, and the panorama, the, the the scenario is changing. Some some countries are planning also to implement uh, demonstration studies uh, in e e even some countries of the east east uh, Europe, and the um, there is a, a a group of it's called Prep in Europe who we meet on a regular basis and we monitor the situation and also we try to to be uh, somehow a, a lobby for uh, pushing for the implementation on, on PrEP. It's called PrEP in Europe. And also I want to thank all the, my colleagues from the, from the group. And that's, that's all. I thank you very much and I hope that... Uh, you know,